Well, good evening, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So, earlier today, Jerry Jones had said that Lyell Collins, regardless of what happens with the court hearing, is out this week. Not playing. Um, don't know if you know the whole story. Lyle Collins had gotten a five-game suspension, where the NFLPA had gotten it reduced down to two. He wasn't satisfied with that. Um, it went to an arbitrator. The arbitrator said, are you kidding me? We're going back to the original NFL agreement. I don't know how that that one worked, because usually the arbitrator finds some, some yeah, medium ground. But the game was upset for some of those, but it's just Yeah, but yeah, because, of, because of what's going on in the world, and, then, and the coach, I'm assuming. Yeah, then, then we heard about the potential <laughs> bribery, where he tried to bribe yeah, one of the testers, yeah. and of course, um, he said he was just joking. So, three games in, he filed an emergency injunction against the NFL. City Hall. You already had three games done. You only had two left. So, it's got the two. so the NFL has now thrown it out. Or excuse me, not the NFL. The court has thrown it out. As they should have. It's done. There's nothing you can do about it. You've got this week to sit out. Jerry Jones already said that you know what? He he wouldn't play regardless of what happens with the court hearing. Why? Because Terrence Steele's are playing lights out. There's no rush to get him back out on the field. Now, had it been Chaz Green that was oh, out there, yeah. I can guarantee you Jerry Jones would have been out there fighting for him, too. He'd had Jerry Jones' attorneys. But as it is right now, this is one of those cases where you could have just said, okay, I got my hand caught in the cookie jar. Let me take the two games. Because now you've gone through You've still got the five games. You still lost the $2 million. But now you have all the dirty laundry out there where people kind of look and say, that didn't seem like that was quite a joke. When you said, you know, first it was $5,000, then you said I got 10000 in my pocket right now. Um, yeah, that, that, that's just one of those ones. That, that's an answer. How much do you get in the kind of uh, like on this season? Uh, about well, his, his his cap hit is like fifteen million next year. They say you get about ten of that back, but then you cut him. Yeah, if you make him a June first guy, that's something to think about. You save about ten million. After pulling this down. Yeah, there's there's gonna be some come to Jesus moments with a lot of players out there that have high salaries. Cause see, here's what the Cowboys have found out. And I was just talking with Brother Ross here on the road, on the way up the road here. You know, it's about a two and a half hour drive. So um, I was talking with Ross for a little bit. And we were having a discussion about how quickly the Dallas defense turned around. That was, I think it was coaches. Well, it's coaching. And get the right players too, but coaching. Coaching. Defense. But, and, and see, the coach that you have believes in young, fast, and physical. Remember when we were looking at, like, K.J. Wright? Oh, man, you know, uh, let, let's sign that guy. And, oh, get Richard Sherman. These are guys that are experienced. Yeah, really experienced. They know the system. But Dan Quinn didn't want to get those guys. They're old. They're old. Yeah, Richard Sherman had two. Richard Sherman, yeah. He's no, he's no longer as fast as he used to be. And probably he's not quite as physical. We learned that last year because we had the Over the Hill gang and Don Terry Poe, Gerald McCoy, Everson Griffin, um, Tyrone Crawford. Those guys, they can take on a block. But if you say, I need you over here at this spot right now, they couldn't do it. And that's where this defense is. It's fast. And it's physical. Because when you play the Dallas Cowboys, 
you know, we, we were talking about the poor Giants. The Giants got beat the crap out of them. They literally did. I mean, Daniel Jones, Galladay's gone for six weeks. Barkley, even though he had that big mouse on the side of his foot, apparently it's not structurally damaged. You know, it, it's it's a bad sprain. So it's he'll still be out. Best case wow. scenario, he'll be out probably you know three, four, five weeks, but it's not you know season ender. But that guy just can't seem to get going. Um, but that's what the Cowboys have done. They've got young guys that not only are they young, fast, and physical, most of them are on a one-year deal, so they're hungry. They know if I don't perform, I won't be here next year. And even if I'm not here next year, everything I'm doing right now helps me to find that next job. So all of these guys are auditioning for their next gig. And where you look at guys that do, and I'm not saying that they should, because you look at Tyron, Tyron Smith. Tyron Smith is, is one of the highest graded players in the NFL this year. He is back with a vengeance. He is, you know, throwing people like he did five years ago. And although his contract, because it was so long, actually is still pretty team friendly. It's actually not that bad for the caliber of uh, left tackle that he is. And, and Zach Martin, you know what, you pay that guy. That Zach Martin, you know, he's the best guard in football in my mind. Um, but Lyle Collins, who missed all of last year and now has missed six games, and then all of a sudden you've got Terrence Steele playing lights out. You start looking at contracts like that and saying, okay, we have some young talent. Different out that center situation. Well, the center situation, though, I, I think that we're, we're going to be visiting this. I think when Lyle Collins comes back, we may start doing some shuffling of the offensive line. I think maybe Connor Williams becomes our center, and you end up having Connor McGovern at guard. I, I think that's how it will go, because that way they'll say they have more experience to out there. But, yeah, Tyler Baddish has got some issues, and I'll deal with that tomorrow. But he, he's been blown up against well, against big guys. He, he loses his technique um, more than anything else. So, oh, that's, hey, that's Stewart. Let me check out Stewart and see how he's doing. All right, guys. Uh, I will see y'all back in the man cave in a few. Peace.